There are roughly 100,000 single frames that make up an animated motion picture. Hundreds of artists will work their fingers to the bone to bring just one image to the screen. Right now, we want to share with you how one of those images is made. Sounds simple, right? Just one frame? Well, think again. First, we'd like to clear all imagery from the screen. Like a blank sheet of paper, the frame is empty. There's nothing to work from until it is made. Let's start with a frame where the image lives. Just imagine this frame as a window in your home, but cleaner. Outside, you see the hills on the horizon. You see the water in the river, the rocks and the trees. And you see the sun above. We all know the sun has light beams radiating from it. They travel down, down, down until they hit objects here on Earth, like this rock here, making it visible. The rock does not absorb all of that light ray. It actually interacts with it. And this type of interaction depends on what that rock is made of and what its surface texture looks like that determines where that light goes next. The rock's surface may be smooth and reflective, like a brand new shiny car, which will cause that sun ray to bounce off of it, casting light on the backside of this tree. But the light doesn't stop there, folks. It may bounce off the bark surface and head into the leaves, causing them to light up a little bit too. Then bounce again and again like a billiard ball in a pool table, until that single ray of sunlight has finally lost all of its energy. We begin to notice that the sun does not light all of our trees and rocks directly, but rather through indirect paths like this one. Most of our shady spots are not black darkness, but mostly visible because light found its way in there. That was just an example of what happens with a single ray of light. Just imagine this for every ray of the sun. There must be millions, billions, uh, bazillions. There are infinite paths that light can take, illuminating everything we see. That is a lot of light bouncing around. That's how physics works in the real world. But what about animated movies? Let's look at how the computer does it. Imagine the window as your computer monitor looking out onto a virtual scene. All objects in the scene or world are 3D models. They are represented here as wireframe objects. This is how they appear to the computer. It is our job to paint them with texture. Let's take a closer look at that rock underneath the tree. When creating this scene, we are able to art direct this rock's surface and therefore how the light will bounce off of it. Will this stone be smooth like a pebble, which would cause the light hitting it to bounce back cleanly and uniformly? Or should we make the stone's surface jagged and jumble, creating more unpredictable behavior on how the light might bounce? This is all known as surface appearance. Every object in the scene has its own art-directed surface that dictates how it interacts with light. But that does not determine how the object itself will look. If this rock is smooth, is it a smooth rock made out of marble? Or maybe granite? We can art-direct this rock and pick which one we want. We can be creative. Now we have a beautiful granite rock living under our tree with a smooth, reflective surface. The process for building this image inside the computer is called rendering. The computer has to make a calculation for every ray we see, adding up to millions and billions of calculations in a scene. These calculations take time and can often demand more than what the computer is capable of. So how do we get around this issue and keep the ray count down to just what we need or what is computable? In our scene, every time a light ray bounces from object to object, the computer needs to calculate its new trajectory, its direction. Some rays may hit that rock first. Others go into the river. Some travel into the sky where we'll never have a chance to see them. So what is the point of calculating those rays when they'll never be in frame? In order to produce a more efficient render, we use a method called path tracing. This method reverses the process and considers only the light paths that are visible to the camera. Path tracing involves emitting rays from the camera, tracing them back to the objects in the scene and then back to the light source. That way, every single relevant ray of light is accounted for without wasting time tracing paths of light we'll never see. Wow. I know what you're thinking. How can we be even more efficient, Mr. Narrator? 
Well, in order to answer that, we need to understand how the computer works. Every time we tell our computer to create a camera ray, it has to do a calculation, a task. For example, we ask it to travel outward from the camera and hit that rock. That's one. The rock's surface appearance then tells that ray how it is supposed to act. The rock is reflective, so our computer will now begin a new calculation plotting our ray's next direction. That's two. It will encounter another object, three, then another, four, eventually tracing its way back to the light source. The way our computer processes these tasks is using a, well, processor. It takes each ray or surface hit and calculates it for us. And it may do this millions or even billions of times for every image we make. You can see the computer has a lot of work to do. Camera rays don't emit one at a time. Instead, millions of rays are emitted across the entire camera frame. The first set of rays go out into the scene and capture everything that the lens can see. But one ray hit is not good enough. Again, we have to do multiple hits to make things look natural. Shadows, translucency, everything seen in the real world. A ray may need to bounce four, five, maybe even 10 times or more to create the look we desire. Once our rays leave the camera and scatter through the scene, things get complicated. Our computer wants to render these rays evenly and uniformly, but there is no inherent ray organization. At random, it tries to grab each single ray, place it on the processor, and try to render it. This is like doing a single problem from your math homework, then putting your book away and pulling out your history book, only to write one sentence for your history report. I don't know, probably about some king uh, nobody's ever heard of or something. Then, after finishing that one sentence, you close your history book and pull out your math book again to solve just one more problem. <laughs> this is crazy! Just stop, that's not a good strategy for doing your homework. It'll take you all night. Computers work in a similar manner. It doesn't matter if one ray is headed toward the river or the next ray is heading into those bushes. It doesn't know any other method to render those rays. It's better to do 10 math problems at a time or knock out a paragraph or two from your history report. With computers, you can organize certain rays by telling them to batch or bundle together based on where they're traveling in a scene, their direction. Because some rays are traveling in the same direction and have similar characteristics, we can batch them together and place them on the processor to be calculated at the same time. See those rays there? They're traveling in a similar direction. Let's bundle them together. Let's also group those rays heading toward that part of the scene. And so on and so forth until we have rendered the entire second bounce with the processor. This is called ray sorting, and this is our method for path traced rendering. <laughs> Pretty nifty, huh? We repeat this sorting process for the third, fourth, fifth bounces, as many as are required until our scene is lit how we desire. By grouping similar tasks together, we are able to trace many more rays in the same amount of time. It is more efficient because it reduces the overhead of switching between different kinds of tasks. Hence, it allows our scenes to render faster and lets our artists create more detailed and beautiful images. In summary, using these three methods, we can build our scene. Surface appearance how light will interact with the object, painting the look of the object, and organizing rays of light to make our scene visible. To create our worlds and bring them to life using the physics of light.